This may come as a shock to some of you, but I'm not actually the embodiment of a perfect player of Kerbal Space Program. I'm just a fleshy, squishy, arguably too squishy, hmm, human, and I'm far from flawless. As such, I record a lot of Kerbal Space Program content for videos that never end up seeing the light of day. And recently, Blackrack selfishly released an amazing visual mod that adds volumetric clouds to the game. And so, three projects that I've had partially recorded and sort of in limbo until now have had all of their prior footage rendered completely useless. But if I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't have been able to finish these projects anyway, especially given that KSP2 is about to release. So hey, I figured let's create a triple whammy Kerbal Space Program Spectacular. Three missions, three entirely unique vehicles, three exposures of the dark side of Laon Aerospace, and much, much more. Let us begin with project number one, the Kerbin Circumnavigation Mission. So I started filming this mission not long after publishing my video about me uh, unsuccessfully flying an aquatic SSTO to orbit. See, in that video, I showed people how to make it to the uh, Cove launch site, unlock the Cove launch site, and have a just have a fun old time launching from the water. And a lot of people were surprised that there were, in fact, other launch sites you could unlock in Kerbal Space Program. So I thought, aha! What if we did a video in which we just start a brand new save game in Kerbal Space Program and just unlock all of the launch sites in a single flight? And uh, in order to carry out this mission, I thought I'd build an aircraft to, you know, fly around. Uh, and the aircraft would deploy a little rover and have a cool little deployment system using pistons and uh, it would drop it down. And well, you can see it being built on screen. And, <laughs> and uh, I thought that would be a fun old thing to do. Here you can see me just testing the deployment piston system and you can kind of get an idea of what I was trying to go for with this aircraft design. Now of course, you know, whilst this works, uh, one downside is that the piston is sort of sticking out the top of the aircraft, looks a bit naff. So I needed to find a way of dressing it up and making it look like it was a... Uh, well, make the plane look normal, basically, and not just have a giant metal pole jutting out of the top of its fuselage. And I'm pretty happy with the solution I came up with. It's an like an AWACS plane. I think that's what it's called. They're basically just planes with a big old radar dish at the back to sort of help out in battle. Air, air battles and, and, and things like that. And in this case, uh, Laon Aerospace decided to use the radar to mount uh, some piston apparatus. And I thought it turned out pretty well. And if you disagree, then you can frankly just go and f Ooh, it looks like the, uh, the startup of those jet engines just saved my monetization for this video, so that was lucky. Here we are on the runway. Yes, I decided to just skip ahead. Skip through the rest of the time lapse of the build because it wasn't really that interesting. It was just fine-tuning the wings, which is really fiddly and takes ages, isn't that fun to watch, and adding landing gear and stuff like that. And I know you guys just want to see this thing launching, so here we go. Now, I have used uh, clips of this flight in B-roll for my Kerbal videos, well, a couple of Kerbal videos, and I think a space this week as well in the past. So, uh, it, this bits of this flight might be familiar to some. Now, this isn't actually, this isn't the, f this isn't the final flight I ended up doing for this mission, because as you can see, uh, the, the rover in the back didn't want to stay put. It was just sort of, it's, I guess it's hanging by that piston, it ends up flopping around, it wasn't staying still, so... Uh, it looked, I mean, the plane kind of worked, but this looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it? So I reverted to space plane hangar after crashing in the ocean. And as you can see, I just attached a single strut to link the rover to the aircraft internal structure. And that solved the problem. Now it flies like an absolute dream. We do need to have an engineer Kerbal on the crew of the rover, though, because we need to keep on adding that strut back every time we re-embark the aircraft once we've concluded our rover, uh, roving, <laughs> our roving activities. So we need to make sure that there's an engineer Kerbal who can go out on uh, IVA construction mode, EVA construction mode, I do beg your pardon, uh, so they can, you know, re-weld the vessel together. So not an ideal solution, but it worked. So I'm going to take it. So our circumnavigation journey begins by going to the closest unlockable launch site to the Kerbal Space Center. And that is the Cove launch site, which you should be familiar with if you've seen my uh, seaplane SSTO video. It's dead easy to get to. I'd already showcased where this was. So I was trying to just rush through this launch site. Now, my idea for this video is that um, although we have now unlocked the Cove launch site, so really a close flyby would have been fine. I thought it'd be nice to, you know, explore them in a bit more detail. Hence why I've brought the rover in the first place. So we're going to just drop the rover down, attach that strut, drop the rover down, drive it to the Cove launch site, and have a little, have a little explore, see what's happening, and then uh, 
Oh, we'll continue on our merry way, but yeah, we'll just drive over there. Speedy got the footage massively, so you guys aren't getting too bored. Uh, I know the uh, the TikTok generation is probably among this show's audience by now, so I've got to keep things nice and snappy. Look at that meme. Wow, isn't that a good and hot and relevant meme? <laughs> Oh good, the mission's nearly over. Yes, I'm returning to the plane. We can just uh, back the rover underneath the, the piston. Took a little bit of finesse to get it docked and get it angled all right. It did take me a little bit longer than I care to admit. So I actually just got a crossfade here to the point where the rover was attached. We could retract that piston and uh, nestle the rover back into the bosom of the mother aircraft. <laughs> and we could close the cargo bay doors and uh, take off. But of course, before we can do that, we need to get our engineer Kerbal out on EVA and in order to attach a strut to reconnect the rover to the interior structure of the aircraft to stop it from flopping around and causing all things, everything to go wrong, basically. So there we are. In order to do this, I did have to re-extend the piston a little bit just to create enough space between the door of the rover and the roof of the inside of the cargo bay uh, so that the Kerbal could actually get out of the rover and then I could retract that piston back again to attach the strut. But now it is time once again to relight those engines on the aircraft and take off in a very safe and realistic manner uh, because as we know trees, trees are not real guys. So uh, it doesn't matter that I'm, I'm clipping through them here, there's no collision mesh. Uh, we don't have to worry. And now we are uh, in the air, so it was all fine. Nice realistic takeoff. Now the second launch pad is quite a ways away. It's not like a, a short hop like it was from going to the Kerbal Space Center to the Cove launch site. We've effectively got across the North Pole of Kerbin. And let me tell you, I vastly underestimated just how big Kerbin is when you're flying a jet aircraft. And I was so, I was so bored. I'm like, I don't know how I can make this an entertaining video because it's just me flying forever and it's not, nothing's happening. And also I was bored just doing the mission. So I thought, you know what? To heck with it, to heck with things. Let's just uh, crash this plane into a mountain and go back to the space plane hangar and come up with an aircraft that can cover the ground I need to cover a bit quicker. Enter mission number two, but still kind of still part of mission number one because it's still the Kerbal Navigation Challenge. So it's kind of so I don't I shouldn't have really done these segment these chapters like this. The Boeing X-20 dinosaur was such a cool concept. It was a space plane that would launch atop a vertical rocket that could perform a variety of military missions like aerial reconnaissance, bombing runs, blunderbirds, I mean space rescue missions, satellite maintenance, and it could function as a space interceptor to sabotage enemy satellites. All of these examples are not just made up by me, by the way. They're all lifted straight from the United States Air Force program overview for the dinosaur. The name originates from the fact that everyone loves dinosaurs and dinosaurs is very cool and also because the proper name for the aircraft would have been Dynamic Sora and so that can just be easily squished down to dinosaur. And as we know, dinosaurs are very cool. Hopefully just as cool as my attempted recreation of the dinosaur body. It's kind of an awkward shape. It's a very boxy aircraft. So it's hard to make a one-to-one -one true scale recreation in Kerbal Space Program, but I think it did a pretty decent job nonetheless. But let's go ahead and test what we've built so far. As you can see, I've just sort of plopped the space plane on top of a big dumb SRB just to get us into the air. And I can just test the glide performance of the rockets and also make sure that the staging works okay. Because there is a fairing with a bit of like the fairing sort of clipped into some of the parts. I wanted to make sure that the fairing would deploy and not destroy the space plane with it. So, uh, yep, that all seemed to work okay. Just tested the engine as well. That worked, which is, you know, a good thing. So now we can just test gliding this thing back to land and see how it performs under... Yeah, it actually works pretty well. It flies kind of nicely. Right up until the point where I messed everything up completely and crashed, but we can ignore that minor blemish in an otherwise flawless aircraft design. And so now it's time to build the rocket. Now the dinosaur would have flown atop a Titan 3C booster, but the Titan 3C is kind of hard to get an accurate recreation of in Kerbal Space Program. But we have parts that allow us to build an accurate Titan 2 booster. And the Titan 2 and the Titan 3, they're basically the same thing, right? Scott Manley, if you're watching this video, just pretend I didn't say that. So I just built a Titan 2 and we'll strap some SRBs to the sides of it later on and call it a Titan 3C. Now what you can see me launching on screen is not a Titan 2, it's much, much stumpier because 
Titan II, uh, the Titan II that I built at least, didn't have enough thrust weight ratio to launch the dinosaur off the pad, it just wouldn't go anywhere. So I built a smaller rocket uh, to build like a sub-orbital version of the dinosaur, I thought it might be kind of cool, to build a couple of variants, because I'm going to be using this thing to hop between the launch sites on Kerbin. So hey, we have a sub-orbital version for shorter journeys, orbital version for bigger journeys. Now what you can see here is me struggling to fly this thing. Yeah, it, it didn't want to stay stable. Despite the fact that I added those massive tail fins, the dinosaur would just constantly tip over again and again and again. And, oh, spoiler alert, maybe that's the reason why this video never saw the light of day, because for the life of me, I just could not get this thing to work. I'm just going to show a quick, uh, quick clip show of some failed launch attempts of uh, me trying to launch my suborbital dinosaur rocket. I, I could never really get it to work too well. Uh, I even tried changing the boost, it's just a big SRB, and that didn't really work either. The closest to true success I got was this. This is actually my Titan II rocket with some of the fuel drains that it had. The necessary thrust weight ratio to get off the launch pad. And I guess I could kind of do a gravity turn thanks to the gigantic wings at the bottom of the rocket. But even so, it was still very, very tricky to fly. By the way, the reason I'm flying on a northern trajectory, you know, towards the pole rather than along the equator is because I'm heading to a specific launch site which requires a gravity turn in this direction. But even after stage separation, as I'm sure you saw everything just flipped over and it didn't work and I just it was a very frustrating experience all around to be honest and I did make multiple attempts at doing stage separation in case it was a fluke but every time as soon as I lit the engine the rocket just flipped so I said to myself, you know what, to heck with this, let's just abandon my silly dreams and ambitions for a suborbital dinosaur. Let's just go straight for the full whammy, which is the Titan 3C with the uh, two SRBs strapped to the side of it. And I thought, hey, why don't we just launch from the Cove launch site? I already unlocked this with my amazing AWACS plane. Why don't I instead make this project into like a single, like a relay race sort of thing? So one craft goes to one launch site then we launch from that new launch site with a new craft and that, that's, this video would have started with the AWACS plane that you've already seen and then we would have switched to a dinosaur to get from the Cove launch site to the Glacier launch site and then something else to get from Glacier so th that was my idea. Now you may have just seen that uh, the first two launch attempts did not go to plan so I decided to add some epic tail fins to the rocket see if that would help control and uh, as you can see they did not help with the control, they still flipped. So I went back to the vehicle assembly building again, this time adding massive delta wings and structural wing pieces to create as much drag low down the stack as I possibly could. I also considered the fact that perhaps my problem was lack of boosters. So I added two much more powerful uh, solid rocket motors to power the Titan 3C rocket. And to be fair, these boosters actually look way more similar to the boosters of the Titan 3C. So I guess this was actually a necessary change Anyway, so let's see how this rocket performed. Right, here we are launching and we're ascending. Play the footage back nice and fast so you can get a gist. I feel like it's easier to appreciate the gravity turn when the footage is played back at speed. Don't know, maybe that's just me. But here we are flying nonetheless. And it's actually going really well. We are maintaining a nice easy gravity turn. Again, heading for a northern trajectory towards the pole because that's where our next launch site is located. And oh, never mind, it flipped out. Yes, uh, that was not my only launch attempt of my Titan 3C. I tried many different variants and I just could not get it to work. And in the end, I decided to bravely give up on my, my project. So I didn't carry my... I'll probably try again at some point, maybe in KSP2. Um, but uh, for now, I'm just shelving this dinosaur because I just... I was at my wit's end and quite frankly, I wanted to do something else such as so when making YouTube videos there's a few things one has to consider you know the title the thumbnail and of course the subject matter itself all three need to be good so sometimes I'll have an idea for a really good video but then I can't think of a very good way I could make a title and thumbnail for that video so I end up not doing it and then there are some times where I've come up with a really good title and thumbnail or like an idea that would produce a very clickable title and thumbnail but then the video content itself probably wouldn't be that great Sea Dragon Heavy is probably one of the few times where I've had an idea where I'm like, oh my gosh, this would have a great title, a great thumbnail, and hopefully great content. 
So um, that's what I set out to do because I'd already made a uh, sea dragon video on my channel and uh, that did really, really well actually. It got quite a lot of views. So I know sea dragon is already a concept that a lot of my viewers like and sea dragon heavy, let's face it, is just dumb and stupid. And is that not the, uh, the motto of many players of Kerbal Space Program? It's dumb, it's stupid, it's way too many boosters. I'm in. So let's build a sea dragon heavy. The only reason this particular video is unfinished is because the volumetric clouds mod sort of outdates the footage. And I never, I built the, I, I built the rocket, right? But I never actually filmed the mission. I just couldn't think of a good payload. So I'm like, cause, cause, cause of course it's sea dragon heavy. What on earth kind of payload would justify such a ridiculous uh, launch system. So, you know, this is more now a cry for help. <laughs> uh, guys, what should I do with this ridiculous launch vehicle that I've built? It was quite difficult to build as well. You know, I had to build it out of fairing pieces for the most part, especially the engine bell, because the Sea Dragon engines, well, the Sea Dragon engine is just a single engine, right? It's just one giant engine bell. So I had to basically cluster a load of Mastodon engines on an engine plate and then dress it up to look like it's just one engine by building a big silver fairing around it and Sea Dragon Heavy, I figured, you know, Delta Four Heavy, Falcon Heavy, that's just three core stages at that point. So, but you can't build fairings in symmetry. So I had to build, I built the central core and then I had to build a separate engine bell for either side manually trying to make it look as symmetrical as possible, which was actually uh, easier said than done. I kind of struggled to get things looking accurate, but I think, I hopefully you'll agree, I did a fairly reasonable job with, with, with things. And yeah, and again, I kind of took the coward approach with the Sea Dragon, like I just built it to Kerbal scale, so I'm using five meter diameter parts, which puts it uh, on par with the Saturn V in terms of scale, when in reality, Sea Dragon was much bigger. But I'm already having a hard time justifying this rocket's existence for a Kerbal Space Program payload. I don't want to make things even tougher for myself by building it several orders of magnitude larger. So uh, yeah. Just wanted to pause there to soak up the launch. It may come as no great surprise that this video uh, or concept didn't really get much further than what you've seen. I've built the rocket, uh, I did a couple of test flights and uh, it was just, I guess, a bit too powerful for its own good. The maiden flight, as you can see, has not gone well. So we relaunched it. Once again, blasting off the pad. I mean, we've got very high thrust weight ratio. Don't forget, we've got no payload in the fairing at this point. I mean, I guess we've got the crew cabin at the top, but other than that, it's just a big empty fairing up there. So theoretically, this would be used to launch like space stations and surface bases in one go. That's kind of the payload I had in mind when coming up with it, but really I was just messing around in the vehicle assembly building. I thought, hey, this is a idea for a video I've had for a while. Let's just try and build a Sea Dragon Heavy and just See, dragon, what happens? That was awful. <laughs> Just like this, uh, this launch attempt, as you can see. Uh, once again, we had a rather explosive, rapid, unplanned disassembly, and yeah. I'll show you a couple more launches, of, well, unsuccessful launches, I might add, of the Sea Dragon Heavy. I feel like this is the most epic launch vehicle that I've built. Uh, for this specific video, mind like so, I I, I want to I want you guys to be able to bask in this awful rocket's glory as much as possible. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the next few minutes or so. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I really am being genuine when I say, what should I use the Sea Dragon Heavy for? Because I really, really do want this to be a video. If it's not in KSP one, then in KSP two. But I really, really don't know what to use it for. So uh, yeah, this is more like I feel like I shouldn't have even published this this footage because now I've spoiled it so now if you've watched this video and you see a sea dragon heavy video appear in your sub feed you're like oh I know this rocket I've seen this rocket I don't need to watch this video and that's not good for me guys I guess what I'm saying is don't watch you from invest in time machine a technology go back in time to a point where you hadn't seen this part in the video and uh, just not watch it just don't watch it and then when I make my Sea Dragon Heavy video eventually in seven years time, you'll be like, oh, what a unique and novel idea that I've never seen before. And speaking of unique and novel ideas that you've never seen before, that concludes my uh, trilogy of unique ideas that you've never seen uh, because I didn't publish them. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the end. It's a bit of a weird video, I know, but I hope it was enjoyable nonetheless. And my patrons and channel members are scrolling on the left on screen. They're my brilliant supporters. If you want to join their ranks and see a name there in lights, you can join my Patreon or channel membership program 
by following the link in the description. There's two videos on screen that you should sure like. Hopefully they're good picks. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching whatever this was. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.